bright duty every student matters hello students welcome to your math class we are going to learn in this class about right angles and straight angles we are going to study about right angles which measures 90 degrees and straight angles whose measure is 180 degrees now where do you see such angles in your surroundings look anywhere that you see in your surrounding observe all such images that you see which are forming these kind of angles here are some examples if you see a ladder which is kept on a particular building so we see at the bottom here it is forming a 90 degrees angle similarly uh, here it's a bread piece of a uh, sandwich that is shown to you it is forming this particular angle as 90 degrees angle is that right now you see that in a clock when it is exactly uh, say six o'clock that you might notice angles of 180 degrees moving ahead here we are we'll start learning about these angles and with respect to the directions okay so uh, we have got the directions of east west north and south so clearly as you can see in this image here stands east that is on the right hand of yours and you have got west on the left side what you face is north and on your back is your south so we can understand the concept of right and straight angles by using the directions there are total four directions that is east west north and south now if i'm talking about directions can you tell me before we move to this before we read the slide let's go back to the other one okay can you tell me if i keep a map of india on this direction board um uh, where do you see sri lanka uh, which direction do you see sri lanka compared when you are looking at the map of india and you have the map of sri lanka so where is sri lanka lying you will say that sri lanka lies in the south of this india whichever uh, no matter where you are standing where you are looking it from 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 the respect of india we say sri lanka is at the south um can you think where does china which boundary china is sharing so it is at the north where do we have pakistan so we have it on the west side right so uh, there are several further divisions not exactly west though we say it is northwest so here we have several mid divisions so it is northeast and all these shillong darjeeling all these fall in the northeast region then we have this southeast region and here we have southwest so this is how we read them the upper two we call them northwest and northeast and the one below we call them southeast and southwest not you know you don't say east south okay you say southeast now let's move to the next slide here the sentence says when we move from north to east then it forms an angle of 90 degrees so here comes the concept of angles in your direction board this particular 90 degree angle is also referred to as a right angle okay it is saying that if you go from your north to east this particular angle that you see has been formed the measure of this angle is 90 degrees okay when we move from north to south we see that it forms an angle of 180 degrees which is called as the straight angle so from north to south if you are going you see that you are going exactly twice 90 degrees so it is 180 degrees now can you tell me if you are going from east to west how much angle do you think you will see on this direction board from east to west it is again 180 degrees from west to north it will be 90 degrees so you can just see here that every turn that you are taking of 90 degrees 
you are changing the direction from north to east, east to south, south to west or west to north. So every one direction that you are changing, it takes you to 90 degrees turn. So now let's read more about this direction chart. When we move four right angles, what do you mean by four right angles? How many 90 degrees? Four 90 degrees. In the same direction, so either you are going clockwise or you are going anti-clockwise. Then we reach at the same position again. That is, if we make a clockwise turn from north to reach north again, then it forms an angle of 360 degrees. And what do we call an angle of 360 degrees is complete angle. This is the name that is given to an angle which measures 360 degrees. Okay. This is also known as one revolution. Revolution means that where you start, you take a whole turn and then you get back again to the same position. So starting from north, if you go clockwise direction and you again land on this point north, you have taken a complete one rotation which measures 360 degrees. Okay, and here it is written that you are moving just in single direction. It is not that you started from uh, north and halfway you are going in the clockwise direction and then again you are taking back 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. Then it will differ in the answer. Okay, so we have to make sure that when we are moving in order to make one revolution, we keep on moving in a single direction. Okay. Now let us see the same concept of angles with respect to the clocks, okay? Here, in a clock, there are two hands that we know. One is called as the minute hand, that is the longer one. And the shorter hand is called as the hour hand, which moves clockwise in every minute. So every time you see they are moving, they will move in the clockwise direction. So this is the clockwise direction here. When you see the clock, the way you see the hands they are moving, it is the clockwise direction. The other way is anti-clockwise direction. When the clock hand moves from one position to another, then they make an angle in between them, right? When a hand starts from 12 and reaches 12 again, it has completed one whole revolution. See, if we have this particular hand here, which is starting at 12, it takes the whole turn and moves throughout this, this, this and finally when it reaches again to this point, we see that it has made one complete revolution of 360 degrees. I hope this is clear. Now, what we have just talked about is that we have got these revolution, one revolution, we can also say half revolution. Half of a revolution means that if this hand, say the minute hand, it started from 12, okay? And after reaching to the point 6, that is the number 6, so what part has it covered? It has covered half of the complete revolution, okay? Similarly, if it has reached from 12 to 3, then it has made a quarter revolution, okay? It has taken just one fourth part of the whole revolution. I hope this is clear. Uh, I'll, this will be even more clear. I'll just show you here. Look at this one. We are going to match these. Okay. These are not the correct answers which are written just down below. Look at the first image here. We see that this longer hand that is uh, the minute hand it is towards 12 and the shorter hand is towards uh, the sixth one. Uh, no, in fact, we should imagine them both as the minute hands. And we are imagining that it has started from 12 and after moving this particular angle, it has come to the point where it is pointing towards 6. Okay? So, can you tell me what kind of revolution is this? Is this a full revolution or a half one? I hope you know that this is a half revolution. And how many right angles do you see in a half revolution? We see a total of two right angles in a 
half revolution. I hope this is clear. Now, let us look at the second image. Here, it is moving from 6 to 9. So, from 6 to 9, what angle do we see? How much part it has covered? It has covered 90 degree angle. That is one right angle. And can you tell me what part of this is of the whole revolution? It is, if you see, this is the whole revolution. If this is the whole revolution. So, what part is this part? I'll just shade it here. What part is this part? If this is the whole, it is one fourth. It is quarter. So, let's match it here. It is one fourth of the revolution and we see it is one right angle. I hope this is clear. Now, moving to this last one. Oh, uh, okay. This is already on the right side. Right. So, starting from one. We are reaching till 10. Okay. So here just imagine this way we can complete the angles. Okay. So if we are starting from 1 and we are reaching till 10. So can you tell me how many right angles you have moved? How many right angles you have moved? You have moved 3 right angles. And what part of a revolution is it? It is three-fourth of a revolution. So this is the correct match that we have done in these three images. Now let us understand this better with the help of some more examples. Okay. So let us discuss it here. What is the angle name for half a revolution? What is the angle name for half a revolution? Half revolution means it is how many degrees? It is 180 degrees. So, what is the name of the angle? The name of the angle is straight angle. Is that right? Now, what is the angle name for one fourth revolution? What is one fourth of the revolution? If the complete revolution is 360 degrees, so, one-fourth is 90 degrees. So, one-fourth revolution is 90 degrees. So, what is the angle name that we give it? We call it a right angle. Is that right? I hope you are confident with this answers. Now, let's move ahead. Here in this image, what do we need to do? We need to draw three other situations of one-fourth half and three-fourth revolutions on a clock. So here we have three images of clocks and we are going to draw one-fourth of a revolution. What do you mean by one-fourth? One-fourth means we have to draw an angle of 90 degrees. So we can start from anywhere. Let's say I'm starting from 2. So from 2, how many degrees I need to move? I need to move 90 degrees. So, where do you think I should stop? I think I should stop at 5. This is one rev This is one fourth of a revolution. Okay. So, here it is from 2 to 5. As I said, the answer may vary. You can start from anywhere you want to. Okay. Now, let's draw the second one. It says half of the revolution. Half means... 180 degrees. Okay. So, this time let's start from 7. Okay. And if we are taking half of the revolution, we will see that the ray will end up at 1. So, if we start from 7, we will reach to this 1 in our clock. And this is 180 degrees. That is half of a revolution or we can say we have moved two right angles. Now the last one is 3 fourth. What is 3 fourth of 360 degrees? It is 270 degrees. So we need to take a turn of 270 degrees. Let us start from 11. Okay. We are starting from 11. So if I'm at 2, this is 90 degrees. 
If I am at 5, this is again 90 more. And if I am at 8, this is 90 more. So this is where the ray will end up while taking a total turn of 270 degrees that is 3 fourth of a revolution. So here I have moved from 11 to 8. So this is what we have moved. I hope this is clear and you are confident that you can also draw such kind of revolutions in the clock.